So uh, I will uh, continue on Mars, and uh, uh, it's a planet, as we know, which don't have a clear magnetic uh, magnetosphere, but the ionosphere at Mars is uh, the upper ionosphere is very similar to Earth, so a lot of the process that we know uh, at uh, Earth, we can study at Mars in a completely different environment. Uh, and if you wonder what the local wildlife is doing during lunch, I have a few pictures which I had just had to squeeze in. This is from yesterday lunch. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will, as we have uh, discussed during this week, uh, for the ionosphere at Mars, most of the same topics is important at Mars. Uh, getting used to the delay here. Uh, and we have uh, the solar wind. Uh, comes to the planet, we have a bow shock, we have shocked uh, uh, solar wind plasma, and then we have this boundary which is not a clear magnetopause due to the uh, few missions uh, going there, or the missions which have been there have not had the full plasma package. We are having this boundary uh, giving many different names. Uh, I will use the word transition boundary, where I, uh, later on in a slide, uh, identify it from the electron information. Then we have a region where we have often low density, and then we get into the ion uh, pores or the photoelectron boundary, which can be a fairly distinct density gradient and we have the upper ionosphere. And since we are interested in the water, uh, we are often interested in how do the oxygen ions go from the ionosphere, where you have high densities, and out. And uh, as at Earth, we have this ionosphere and uh, empty uh, or low density region before we go out into the shocked solar wind. Uh, this is a recent paper just published from Jarvanen and Kalju, where they were looking at the pickup process at different places. They use Venus and uh, Earth observations and calculated statistically what kind of energy and what kind of gyro radius the pickup uh, oxygen ions would get, and then they extrapolated it to Mercury and out to Mars. And as we see, the further out we go in the solar system, the higher pickup energy you will get, which is just a V cross B effect due to the angle. So we know that at Mars, the induced electric field on uh, the Mars planet will be a little uh, more significant than on Venus. Uh, another thing which is... Uh, slightly different with Mars is that if we have fluct uh, fluctuation in uh, the solar wind at the proton gyro frequency, they will end up in, down in the ionosphere at the oxygen frequency on average because the magnitude of the solar wind's magnetic field and the normal uh, ionospheric magnetic field is a factor of four. So this is a big difference between Mars and Venus is at Earth, uh, Mars and Venus, sorry, Mars and Earth, as Earth, the solar wind have to go through multiple process to get the energy into the ionosphere, while at Mars, we have a very easy way to go a direct coupling. Now, we don't have the observations yet to say that this is happening, but at Mars, most likely, the solar wind can directly put energy into the ionosphere. Uh, I ha uh, have made a code, CAPIT code, which is photochemistry plus uh, particle tracing to evaluate what kind of process limiting the ion outflow. Uh, it's just a thin slab along the surface of Mars, and I can allow 
uh, drape magnetic field and crustal fields going into my simulation domain. And the first pro uh, questions I asked was, is it the energy input into the ions which controls the ion outflow, or is it the uh, ionization rate that controls the uh, ion outflow? And when we have low wave power and uh, the energy into the ions I uh, use is uh, uh, ion cyclotron waves, assuming that the solar wind is directly feeding ion cyclotron waves down at the ionosphere, is that we get a, more or less a linear relationship. The more energy we dump into the ionosphere, the more outflow we go. In the opposite end, when we have enormous amount of wave power in our ionosphere, we start to be limited due to the ion uh, production. And today, Mars is in the middle, so it's not on either uh, end. Uh, with more and more energy into the ionosphere, the chemistry or what ion species that are leaving uh, the ionosphere will change. So the uh, ion ratio of the outflow is important. This is uh, density profiles from my simulation. Here is altitude versus distance along the uh, surface and it's going from 150 kilometers up to 350 kilometers subsolar point here. And in this uh, data I show here, I have two crustal fields here, and I have a lot of it rotating into the simulation uh, field. And you can see that uh, the crustal magnetic field at Mars will clearly modify the ionosphere topology and the density profile. Uh, there have been indications that we can have a long uh, or long, large uh, neutral winds. So I played around with putting in horizontal uh, neutral winds in two different profiles. And you can see the neutral winds can drive for the same, everything else is the same. Uh, the density profiles will look completely different. So we have a very dynamic and uh, most likely a complicated system to understand the ionosphere. Uh, this is a 24 hours period where I have been allowing different crustal fields moving in and out of my simulation box and I have estimated how much ions is escaping. And let's take for oxygen here the uh, loss rate here and you more or less can uh, uh, guess where I had a crustal field moving into my simulation box. And uh, what I want to say here is uh, you can't look at uh, Mars static when we look at the ion outflow, especially when we come down on crustal field scales, because sometimes you get much more outflow, but then it takes up to two hours to replenish the ions which were uh, leaving the simulation box. So the uh, dynamics of the system is heavily uh, affected of how quickly we can replenish an ions that we are sending out. This is uh, the key uh, chemistry chain you see. And for instance, if we start to remove a lot of oxygen, we will have fewer O2 plus and uh, recombination of the hot corona. And we are very sensitive to the temperature and for instance, the electron temperature. Uh, crustal fields due to its guiding plasma into the ionosphere or up also will impact what kind of ratio between CO2 and O and O and O2 will come out of the uh, ionosphere. This is a global simulation from Modelo, and what I wanted to show here is they have uh, studied the convection electric fields impact of where the ions goes, and did one cut here up in the plume and one in the tail. And if we look at the oxygen here, we see at the X cut here, the tail cut, 43% of the oxygen is going down the tail, 
while 60% is going up in the plume. In contrast, the heavier ions are 66% going in the tail and fewer up in the plume. And the same thing with the lighter is mainly going in the, to the plume. So we have a clearly mass depending on system. This is organized with a, a ion convection. Uh, uh, if you go far or farther in uh, to lower altitude, uh, you see that the induced electric field start to be less of important. This is work that me and my student uh, Chris Fowler has been doing. And uh, here, for instance, we have uh, mapped out using uh, Mars Express uh, dusk observation here of the location of this magnetic sheath transition region. And we see up in the north, we have a fairly, uh, this is the probability of where this transition region is, constant, but in south, where we have the crustal field, it's puffed up. We have also done the same statistical study on the photoelectron uh, sphere, and it's also puffed up in south and north. And then we have looked into the ion fluxes coming through here, and we see that, which others also have seen, that up here we have a lot of oxygen ions coming out straight down, which is a bulk flow. In the southern atmosphere, we see a lot of oxygen here heated, but we see very little here. So in the south, the crustal fields are preventing the tailward motion of the oxygen. And what me and Chris have uh, uh, identified or proposed is these crustal fields, as they come in the morning side, they are compressed by the solar wind, so they are closed flux tubes, exactly like Earth. We are compressing them as they're going in, going to the noon. We're lifting up the plasma and we start to have very good coupling to the solar wind. We heat it and uh, there, especially the oxygen, which we're talking about, start to have large gyro radius so they can actually get out into this uh, magnetic sheet transition region, and we see a significant amount of oxygen here, which we do not see in the northern hemisphere. During normal times, this flow is much bigger than that, but the few times we have really high compression, the gyro radius of the oxygen is so big that the flux coming out at this uh, sheet transition transition region is equal or even larger than this bulk flow up here. So I have tried to say that a lot of the physics that we have at uh, Mars, uh, at Earth ionosphere, we also have at Mars and with MAVEN who will go down to 50 kilometers altitude on regular basis and deep dips to 120 kilometers, uh, we're going to have a lot of more uh, knowledge about this, and uh, what the animal do during lunch time is to get the food. <laughs> Papers open for discussion. Jan. Uh, induced? Uh, it's a convected electric field from the solar wind that you have a flow around over the planet. Uh, it's coming from V cross B. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't 
think of standing up. <laughs> that, that seems like something worth discussing. Okay, you can have my. Thank you very much. Lila, I, I must, may not have been paying proper attention and I apologize. <laughs> On one of your plots where you showed your results of your model and you had different uh, fluxes, what were the units? <laughs> Uh, was it the density profiles? Yeah, the 10 to the 11, it was the logarithmic scale, the top outflow the, flux. The, the outflow rates? Yeah, it was 10 to the 11, and I don't know what the It was were. the fluxes, so it was the not integrated over the planet. Yeah, but was it per meter squared or per centimeter squared? Uh, I can look it up, but okay. uh, nice. we can okay. take it after. That's, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, also, whether it's a um, you or number density. <laughs> well, that's another. Th any any other questions from? Uh, I'd like to ask: do, Does reconnection with those southern ma uh, magnetic anomalies play any role in this transport problem? Uh, I I would uh, assume that. Uh, that reconnection, uh, the brain has done simulation and seen how the crustal fields open up and closes as the planet rotates. Uh, I think for the oxygen, if you just get that little energy, the gyro radius is so big that most of the time for the oxygen, reconnection is not important. However, magnetic field gradients and magnetic field topology changes is very important. And in that, reconnection is uh, important. So I think it's the topolo man magnetic field topology that is important, not necessarily acceleration associated with reconnection. Thank you. Oh, another question here? Just to follow on that with uh, Dave Brain's detaching of little blobs off of the elongated um, uh, crustal field loops that, that might snap and, and pop away. I think he estimated it was only a few percent towards total uh, ion loss rate out of, out of the Mars environment. Yeah, especially when they come on the dusk side because most plasma has fall back towards the planet. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'm going to have to cry about that tonight because I always want the magnetic field to be really important. Uh, the topology is very <laughs> important and the gradients, it, at Mars, the gradient is so strong that 